All right, well, it looks like people are joining in. Welcome to this week's weekly Uber community meeting. If you want to go ahead and log your attendance and add any items to agenda, open floor, or pull requests, um, mailing list, conversations that might, might need a little extra attention, feel free to go ahead and add. I am hearing a murmur. I have a, a quick question um, regarding a pull request. And I think the, how things work regarding tests and stuff like that. Um, if I could ask that before we get started, just while people kind of filter in, because I think it'd be pretty boring for a lot of people. Um, and I noticed Daniel Hill is online, and I know he talks a lot about uh test failing and stuff i've got this one which has a failed test it's a single line change to do with a link um and it failed a test and it seems odd that it would fail any test um like i know that there's been a lot of uh, been a bit of chatter about test failing and stuff is it normal for me just like to run a retest and is there a, a a good or bad time to run those retests to ensure better success? So I guess the question was directed at me. Um, I, I only partially because I've seen you uh, send out emails regarding test failure and, and stuff like that. Yeah, in general, normally the process is uh, that um, um, we have the usual uh, um, um, uh, review process and uh, what normally happens is uh, that uh, there is an LGTM added and an approval added and then our retest bots start to kick in automatically. So it retests um, uh, every couple of hours, but only um, a couple of uh, uh, retests per run. So, um, but yeah, in, in general, if you have something that is still failing and you, this looks like some kind of flakiness, which you, for example, could, um, well, which you could look at first would be the flag finder reports, for example, then you, if you would see there that this test was flaky actually, then you probably um, um, could do a retest. Um, First of all, I wouldn't generally assume that the test is just flaky um, and just uh, hit retest without investigating anything. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if you have the uh, impression that it's uh, not flaky and it's, for example, it's working locally, um, then maybe it's a safe thing to do. So I don't think if that, or, or I'm, I'm not exactly sure if that answers your question. Um, does it or? Uh, I, uh, I think it helps fill in some context. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I can only presume that it is a flaky test. Um, but it also sounds like once it gets um, reviewed and gets another perhaps a, a proof tag, it will get retested anyway as a matter of course. Or do I need to always manually retest? Um, so, like I said, if it is, it has the LGTM approved label, then it gets retested automatically. Um, because of course, it is assumed then that everything is okay, and that we should uh, just that, or then also it is assumed that this might just be a flaky test test which is failing and then of course um, it's safe to do. But until it is not in that state, I'd say rather just uh, try to 
really have a deep look into, into why the trust is failing somehow. Um, and then maybe also uh, go to the community and ask um, whether people know whether that test is failing somehow or whether that test is flaky. Um, so what I would generally not uh, advise is just to just to r uh, run the retest um, just uh, without checking anything. So, um, yeah. But yeah, but, but I am I am uh, aware that we still have some flaky tests that somehow um, hold off uh, uh, lanes from getting green. Um, but I think these are a couple. But and I also must admit that we have not the best situation of CI recently because we had lots of things going wrong besides from complete cluster failures. Uh, and SRI V nodes not working properly, and we had lots of investigation going on. So, yeah, I think I think that in general we would need a little bit more stability uh, on the CI, or uh, we would we would uh, want to settle down things um, now that that at least I think from my point of view at least there are not that much issues or not that many issues anymore. So um, yeah, but if you could probably uh, have the um, have a concrete test which you want to uh, want me to have a look at, for example, or or the community to have a look at, then maybe just this is also the right place to discuss it. Okay. Can you thank you? Can you just give give the example of why you? what you want which which pr you wanted to retest is it one that uh, got lgtm got approved or got none of them um i believe cats put it into the minutes here for course work that need attention seven five five six um and if i look at it here it failed the pool cubert e2e windows 2016 test um but like i said it's a i was replacing a um it's a, a link i changed it from mini cube to okd um and i i i don't understand why that would fail any test but i'm i'm, yeah. I'm also new and kind of like learning about all this stuff so yeah to, to be honest, actually, that is real, really something that is happening from time to time that we have a request timeout on the etcd server. So yeah, <laughs> in that case, you should retest, but only this one. <laughs> okay. Sorry for that. <laughs> Beginner's luck. No, that was, that, was, that was a really handy explanation for me. Thank you. Sorry, my Zoom dropped out there for a second. Um, all right, I guess, did anyone want to bring up and openly discuss the cal calendar stuff? I guess there's an, an item on the agenda for that. I personally do have duplicate items. Um, I've just left them there out of paranoia. <laughs> uh, kind of me too. Um, so the, the CubeVert calendar meeting was set to GMT, um, which doesn't respect daylight savings time. Um, and I think there was one other one that I haven't deleted, which was, uh, it, it is owned by Fabian, um, which was the correct time. I ended up just changing the, the time of the CubeVert to match what is in the, the meeting minutes. Um, I guess this is an opportunity perhaps for people to say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, or if, you know, this is a bad time, but I, I presume this is a fine time because we're all here. This is a fine time to talk about. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. The, uh, the meeting was originally in Central European time or Central European summertime, so CST or CEST. Uh, so if possible, could we just set the time zone of the meeting to be that instead of UTC? Wouldn't that fix the problem? Yes, it would. Absolutely. I just wasn't sure if there was a reason for it to be GMT specifically. Um, 
Nope. Because not of the... anymore. Perfect. All right. I can change that. Thanks for the context. And then co presenting virtual office hours, uh, Wednesday 18th. Anyone want to jump in and be part of that? Is there more information on uh, what exactly we're uh, is wanting to be presented and what the conversation will consist of, Andrew? Absolutely. Uh, so this is more of a follow up to an email I sent out, um, depending on your time zone, yesterday or today or the day before. Um, so this is during KubeCon. It's on the first day. Um, it's at eleven thirty Central European time. Um, it's uh, we applied for this with the CNCF. Um, which was uh, one of the things as being a project with the, as a CNCF sandbox project. Um, it's a 45 minute session. It basically gives us a, an opportunity to present kind of like who we are, what we're doing um, and have like a correspondence with, um, I guess, Kubevert users or potentially cube, new Kubevert users. Um, I've got one uh, presenter already confirmed, but it'd be nice to have, a, I think a couple of people um, to, to be there, maybe we could run a demo or um, it's, it's kind of a little bit open-ended as to what we end up doing in that 45 minute slot. But um, I, I think it'd be useful to say like, who we are, what we've done maybe in the last six months, um, um, what perhaps we're um, planning on getting done or what people can expect in the not just future. Maybe run a demo too and then have some, some time and space for questions from the audience. Seems like a great time to jump in and be part of the conversation. Um, if anyone wants to join, uh, feel free to mail a mailing list or otherwise uh, reach out in Slack and we'll get you spun up for that. All right then. All right, uh, and uh, yes, and um, sorry if I mispronounced your name, but I think, is it Aliche? Yeah. <laughs> is uh, also doing, um, and I think I spoke it at the end of my uh, email as well. So the, the virtual office hours is I think two or three hours before Aliche's um, talk in the maintainers track. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh yeah, um, so if anyone is interested, uh, I'm also preparing a demo those days. So um, if anyone wants to collaborate or know what I'm preparing, just Ping me, Andrew, and I, and uh, we can also maybe share ideas. That'd be great. Definitely. And it would be good to, yeah, 100%. Um, uh, I would love to talk to you because we'll have the opportunity maybe to um, feed anyone interested in, in that maintenance presentation from the virtual office hours, yeah. it being the same day. Yeah, so I, I'm preparing slides and demos. So if anyone is interested, I can also share the materials. So. Great. All right, that looks like some good agenda for that. Uh, jumping into next item, we have some PRs. Oh. We're looking for feedback on. See what we got. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, I was a bit late adding those. Okay. Uh, it's not directly. It's so. It's like fifty percent related to to convert here. Uh, there was a a request to have some checks run. Uh, or validations or tests, however you want to call them, to run on, a, on an active, even production cl uh, cluster. And uh, there, there is a proposal raised to, to have something like that. Uh, in, in general, I will say it's like, a, I will try to simplify it. Is if, uh, if an administrator wants to check if there is connectivity between two VMs, you can, uh, in, so not between two VMs, uh, on a network that he defined, just an example, then he can just run a, 
push a button or apply a manifest, and uh, that that will launch uh, something we call a checkup or test that will create two VMIs on specified uh, nodes, and uh, they will just run a test of ping or checking the latency or doing all kinds of stuff between them and uh, report the result so the administrator can see. All this in a way that it will not interfere with his active cluster and not, uh, not uh, leave any leftovers after it finishes. Originally it was, uh, it was requested to, uh, for for the cases where SRV was involved, because uh, when setting up SRV, sometimes it gets complicated. There is uh, someone needs to, to connect physically the, the NICs. You need to configure correctly the SRV to the correct network and all of this uh, detail. So uh, there was a need to, to do this check without telling the customer to, to apply, to have like 10 steps done. So if you have time to read it through, then it will be great and give some feedback. Thank you, Edward. Anyone have any feedback on what they've reviewed on that so far or questions if you haven't? And I haven't had my coffee this morning either. Okay. Um, thanks for sharing that with us, Edward, and uh, I look forward to seeing that mature with you, your progress. Let's see. I covered that pull request, and maintainers that is Anyone want to speak to the storage test code refactoring? I can have a look. You can assign me. Okay, that already it looks like it's already assigned. Hey, there's the email that you mentioned about getting someone involved in the office hour. Is out. It's always fun to look at the release notes. Oh, any activity on that? Slightly unrelated, but could be possible on the Helm chart. Um, not going to dive into that one right now. Covered PM Tim.
pay for it and hopefully they got it and my community meeting um is getting activity unless anyone wants to assign to them real quick. Hey, you can ignore this. I will have a look. 7542 or the previous? Uh, this one. And what was the okay. previous one? Oh, the previous was that uh, opened a couple hours ago related. Oh, yeah. To... We had, yeah, we are looking into it. Yeah, it looks like it was getting attention. Um, I'm sorry. Can you? I'm, I'm not putting voices to names yet. Uh, so I, I just I created the issue. To explore. Oh, okay. Okay. Any volunteers or leads for the IPv6 multitask once, going twice. I think she she Alona is on it. So I think she opened it for for tracking. Well, that covers everything on the agenda, and we've reviewed some of the idle, uh, other um, undeclared things. Any closing thoughts, opinions, requests, or feedback? Going once, going twice. Have a good Wednesday if it is your Wednesday. Otherwise, for those of you in Australia, have a good Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.